Paymium. I had a podcast yesterday on Grant Cardone, and one of the famous things Grant Cardone says is that money follows attention. So he's made tons of money, and he plotted it on a graph that as his social media reach skyrocketed, his money followed almost an exact uh, overlay uh, that he made from the uh, attention that he received. And one of the biggest models for monetization is what's called a freemium model. So they used to have pay-to-play in video games where you could just buy characters and things like that. You still do have that to a certain degree. I mean, there's a lot of uh, in-game monetization, but it's now more uh, free-to-play, meaning that everybody uh, gets a free service. And then a small percentage, I think in video games might be like 2%, uh, upgrade, uh, and then you have the whales that drive a lot of it. So the same thing happens in content or analogous, like you have a freemium model and then in software, and then a certain percentage become paying customers. Hopefully it's more than 2%. I don't know what the percentage is, but the freemium model basically goes that you build up an audience like Grant Cardone does, and then you start to monetize it. Um, but there's another model that's kind of the opposite and kind of related to, to um, Premium that I want to talk to him about, which is Paymium. Um, so in the Paymium model, uh, what happens is things that were one time free become paid services. So like you have the paywalls of the uh, New York Times. Now the New York Times could do that because they have a huge audience already. So it used to be that you could read the New York Times free online uh, that would drive their subscription model. But now the... Um, uh, now the online content requires a subscription as well. So, you know, there's pros and cons to each. I mean, you could argue that the New York Times is, is maximizing revenue, or you could talk, you could say that according to the freemium model, they're actually, you know, not maximizing re- revenue because their reach is lower, because not as many people are aware of the New York Times because they can't read it. So people that didn't know about the New York Times, so it's kind of a trade-off. Like, the freemium bo- model is a trade-off because... You're giving away a lot of stuff for free, and you're not getting it, you know, monetary benefit out of it. I mean, you are getting some of the free people to convert, so that is, you know, a definite plus. The payment model is um, giving a different kind of trade off. What it's doing is it's um, uh, maximizing the revenue from the people that already know the value, but it's minimizing the amount of new people that can learn about it because, you know, a generation from now. People are going to be like, what's the New York Times? You know, people that didn't grow up with it because they will not have any, had any exposure to it.